Uh, it's Connor Johnson here, and uh, today <clears throat> we have a uh, gun review of my picking for my duty holster that I am proud to carry. Uh, I have carried this in the field a couple of times, and I am very proud of it. I went and shot it, and we'll definitely put some uh, video of uh, the shooting inside uh, of this video also, but we will be taking a look at the FN. 509 pistol and it comes in this nylon case and there's multiple versions of this pistol that I will talk about when we uh, break it open and everything like that but all the FN uh, pistols or the 509 series pistols will be coming in these nice nylon cases and it's a zipper case I like it because it's smaller it can fit in the compartments a lot better it can fit in your range bag a lot better instead of those big bulky cases that a lot of uh, firearms normally come in today but uh, FN has moved to this and I, I hope that they continue to uh, move on to that and keep their products being shipped in these and here's the 509 itself right here so, like I said, ladies and gentlemen, this is the FN 509 pistol, but instead, there are two versions of this handgun, too. One of them is the standard version, which comes with two magazines and illuminescent sights, which means they need to charge, and then they will glow for a limited amount of time before they die out and they need to be recharged. This version is the law enforcement version, which comes with three magazines, and it comes with Trigicon Night Sights, and these bad boys are amazing. Amazingly well put together Night Sights, and I love Night Sights. I, I, I swear by them now. And, of course, you have the pistol itself here. So, real quick, before we get too deep into it. This is a loaded magazine, but... There is no round in the chamber whatsoever. In case you all don't believe me. Here's the flashlight. No round in the chamber whatsoever. Clear chamber. Just that way you guys aren't freaking out about that. Now, the history with this firearm in particular, let me just set it down right here. With the history of the FN 509, FN wanted to submit their design for the MHS trials or the modular handgun system for the military contract. The military is replacing the M9 Beretta, and FN, of course, submitted their version, which was supposedly this right here, but uh, a lot of people have told me that it was not necessarily this one. It was a prototype version that they submitted to the MHS program. Of course, Sig Sauer, the P320, got the Army contract or the military contract, so when they decided to release this one they released it to select uh law enforcement um agencies and a couple of civilians and they gave their feedback on the prototype and then eventually this is what we came this is what they gave birth to is the fn 509 and as you all can see it is a striker fired handgun it is chambered in nine millimeter and there are a couple other versions of this pistol and a couple of versions of it that just came out recently so, originally, the FN 509, its specs are a striker-fired hand, uh, striker handgun. Basic magazine is uh, 17 plus 1, so you have 18 rounds. In this, surprisingly, it's, it's a duty pistol, but it's, it's not like a full-size pistol. And that's what I liked about it, of how compact it looks, and it fits in the hand relatively well. The sights are very, very easy to pick up on this thing, and of course these are night sights, and we will get into those in a little bit later. But, another thing that definitely caught my eye about this pistol is how ambidextrous it is right out of the box. So you don't need to go buy some aftermarket parts to uh, swap everything in and out. However, from what I was told by FM when I called customer service to ask them a couple questions regarding this, they just came out with um, a new system where you can actually... Um, Swap out the ambidextrous controls. You could put a plug in on this side, so that way it would just be 
like said, a strictly left-handed or right-handed firearm, it would no longer be ambidextrous. But like I said, I like to keep everything ambidextrous. So yes, you have ambidextrous magazine releases on both the left and the right. Ambidextrous slide releases on both the left and the right. And the trigger pull on this thing is, I've measured it to maybe five, five and a half, six pounds. Not bad. I actually like it. And how it works is, um, I, I've heard people say that it's like a Glock, but I'm trying to depress the trigger right here. There is actually a hinge safety right here where you see it go in order for it to actually be pulled. And the reset is really quick and crisp. I like this trigger. A lot of people have um, said that the trigger on this thing is really gritty. Um, I've shot it. I don't think it's gritty. I think this is a nice trigger. Um, I think it is a very decent combat trigger. Um, I'm used to combat handguns in particular because my dad was in the military. He first handgun I ever fired was the Beretta M9 when I was, I think like maybe seven years old. And I just got used to those kinds of triggers. And a lot of people say that the trigger is gritty. I don't know what that means. So if somebody can please let me know what that means. And then I can be the judge of, yeah, it's, it's really gritty or it's not gritty. I, I really honestly do not know what a gritty trigger is. I think this is a decent trigger. But yes, totally ambidextrous controls, as you just saw. And I have broken this thing in, and a lot of people said that the left and right side magazine releases were a little stiff, but no problem. Left side, no problem. And I am not left-handed dominant. I am a right-handed shooter. I think that I should start training to be left-handed, um, so that way I can get better at uh, one-handed manipulations. Manipulation, excuse me. Uh, just start practicing with my left hand, my off hand, so to speak. Now, the multiple versions that just got released. Of course, you have the FN 509 standard. The FN 509 law enforcement, which is this one right here, comes with three magazines and night sights. And then you have the FN 509 tactical. And before the 509 tactical came out, you had options with the 509 standard, which is either black or flat dark earth. And then the 509 tactical came out. And the difference with the 509 tactical is you have suppressor height night sights right out of the factory. You have a threaded barrel. Of course, you have your 9x13 Picatinny rail down here. Um, pretty much the virtually the same handgun, except the controls are a little different. The slide releases are a little more elongated, I should say. They, sh they, they stick out just a little bit more so that way you can hit that a lot quicker. And the magazine releases, I think, are bigger, but they're uh, a little more shrunken into the actual grip so that way they don't get in people's way. And the also, the other thing that it comes with is a replaceable back strap. So if this is the large back strap, if you don't like that, you can actually just go ahead and swap that out with just a couple of tools and replace it with this one right here. Um, I haven't done that yet because I actually like the way my handgun is set up right now. It's comfortable, fits in my hand. And that's the reason why I got this particular handgun is because it felt right in my hand. And the texturing is another thing that definitely sold me. I like the aggressive texturing on both the back here and on the sides, and on the front of the handgun. I really like the texturing. And even there's a stipple right here where your thumb would go. And it's very, very comfortable. It's not uncomfortable to the point where it's going to really bite your hand every time you shoot it, and it's going to get uncomfortable. This is a grip that I'm very comfortable with all day. And I like this grip a lot. I love this gun. This is a fantastic, fantastic gun. And we'll go over the accessories and everything that I've got, my setup and everything, every time I go out into the field. And, of course, we're going to go over the takedown version of this. Oh, yes. And there's also one more version of the 509 that just got released. Two, actually. They just released the black version of the 509 Tactical. So, when the 509 Tactical was released, it originally came in flat dark earth. Now, you have the option of having it in black, which, ura, I, I, or hua, or whatever, I should stop saying that crap. That's very, very amazing that they finally came out with that but i'm a little disappointed that it took them that long to just release the tactical in the black when i think it should have been black that should have been released first and then fde second but i digress and then they just came out with one that i think is more mid-sized it's 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 got maybe 15 rounds maybe 10 i'm not quite sure um, so I don't know the California laws, so I think that would make it California compliant for people in California that want to have the 509. Um, like I said, I'm not sure what the laws are out in California, uh, but you know, God bless you guys that live out there and comply with those bullshit laws. That's just my opinion, ladies and gentlemen. 
Now the next thing we're gonna deal with is uh, the takedown. Takedown is very, very easy. So what you're gonna do here is a little slide back, put your slide stop up. This little lever right here, push that down, send the slide home. And the next thing you're gonna wanna do is pull the trigger and it comes right out. That That is really, really good disassembly. And as you can see here, we have the slide. And I, I fired this thing, I have lubed it, and it's 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 incredible. And that lube is still there. I shot this thing a couple, like, last week or so, and it's everything is still there. And, of course, to take down the weapon even further, recoil spring. Just take that out. And then you have your barrel. Just push. And out it gets. And now you have a completely disassembled 509. Put the barrel back. Recoil spring goes back here. Marry the two together. Put your slide stop up. Hit that knob or the latch again. Send it home. Rack it. Do a functions test. And there you go. Very, very easy takedown, which is another reason why I bought this handgun in the first place. The takedown is easy, and how this thing worked at the range, it was great. Uh, there were a couple of malfunctions that I ran into that aren't in the video, but I did run into a couple of failures to feed and a, a couple of failures to eject. But then once I got the gun broken in, I had no malfunctions. So that's to be expected with buying new handguns right out of the box is you're going to have a couple of malfunctions until you break the firearm in. And in terms of accessories that I got for this gun in particular, you have a TLR1 Streamlight flashlight. And hopefully I can just uh, get this on film really quickly. You just push the tabs. And with this one, you actually kind of have to like go at it in an angle in order to get that on there. But once it's on there, you just tighten up the screw here. It's not going to really come off there. And of course, I think this is 350 lumens, maybe just 300. I'm not quite sure. More than enough that I need. So I got that. And then I decided to spoil myself and get a 24 round magazine for this bad boy. So there you go, 24 rounds plus a uh, weapon mounted light. Now onto the biggie here uh, in terms of accessories. So this is my holster slash holster setup that I have. This is Blackhawk products. You have the Blackhawk Omnivore holster right here. And I have this mounted onto a Blackhawk Phi rig. I, I didn't need the, uh, the it's a Serpa system, but I decided to pick the one without the holster because I had a holster and wanted to figure out how to mount it. Now here, in t if you guys are going to be doing this the way that I did it, here's a word of warning. The screws that come with both this, the Omnivore holster, and the Serpa leg, uh, leg rig will not work. They're too short to actually reach into the back of the omnivore and actually get enough bite to retention to retain the holster on there. So I actually had to get, um, I actually had to dig up some other hole, um, excuse me, some other screws. And I'm actually going to attempt to kind of show you guys that on camera. Honestly, I should have done this earlier, but nonetheless, it works really well. Now that I actually have it, and that came out relatively quick, so let's just go ahead and grab that. So this is the screw that I used in order to uh, mount my uh, mount my uh, holster onto the leg rig. These, I have no idea what they are, but these are the screws that do not come with the kit. The kit that uh, the screws that you get in the kit are shorter, a lot shorter, and uh, I needed something a little bit longer, and of course I needed something that would cover the holes and prevent it from leaving, and that's what I did. And it works. 
So everything is going according to plan with this holster. I have uh, worn this holster out in the field. I've had no issues. Um, the only thing that, you know, I have to get used to is I have to get used to my, uh, I have to get used to it kind of like I, I would say, not really wobbling around. I guess I would, I guess I would say wobbling around. Um, cause whenever the, whenever that is in the holster, uh, it's not really up high. It will wobble around. And of course, this is the omnivore holster that will accept the firearm as is with a weapon light. So, and this is a level two retention holster. So in order to get this firearm out, you have to depress this thumb pad right here, push, pull. And that's all you got to do in order to get that bad boy out of there. And on the upside, you can keep your weapon light on there. Woohoo, that was close. <laughs> okay, let's, let's be calm here. I did look at other forms of retention holsters that uh, I would use. I felt like that, that would be the most comfortable, so that way I don't have to take my weapon light on and off. And next thing we're going to go do is we're going to check out the actual night sights on here. And uh, that's it. And like I stated, this is the law enforcement version of the FN 509. Hopefully you guys can actually see. There we go. The night sights are pretty, pretty bright. I can see them. You can see them. In person, they're phenomenally uh, visible. But one thing that I've noticed, as soon as I turn on my TLR, you kind of negate the effect of your night sights, which is a little upsetting. See how they are right there? And then when you turn on your light, you can just barely see them. But of course, I can still visibly see my front sight. So it's not that big of a deal. So there you have it, the night sights, and of course showcasing the uh, TLR uh, by Streamlight, TLR1. The Omnivore Blackhawk holster that I have will only accept the Streamlight TLR1s and 2s. Uh, it will not accept anything else. And the reason why I got the Omnivore holster in particular was because it will accept virtually almost every handgun. And it doesn't say that it would accept the 509, but from what I remember people saying about the 509 is that it is a clone of the FNS. I took that into an account and boom, it fit because it did state on the webpage that it will fit the FNS. And this is almost a pretty much a identical clone of the FNS and it fit. And of course it's got the light on there and it works. So any people that are struggling trying to find a holster for the 509, you're welcome. So in terms of why I picked up the 509 in particular was because it was everything that I needed in this kind of package. Everything was ambidextrous right out of the box. It shoots wonderfully. I was virtually almost on target. I shot that target from like maybe about 20 feet, maybe 25 feet. I, I did adjust it. There are a couple of videos where I'm shooting it a lot closer just so that way I can get a general idea of where I'm aiming with the sights. And I was fiddling around with the light just so that way I can get used to turning it on and off because this is the first weapon light that I've ever owned regard and also the first weapon that I've owned with a weapon light and of course a 24 round magazine. And with the 24 round magazine, of course, it functioned flawlessly. So any FN 509 magazine will work in the 509. I don't know if this uh, will work with the 10 round magazines for the midsize one that uh, the midsize has. I'm not quite sure the specifics on the midsize, but it's a brand new version of the 509. And you do have the 509 Tactical, 
which now comes in flat dark earth or black. You have the 509 midsize, which I think only comes in black and might come in flat dark earth. You have the 509 standard, which comes with the luminescent sights that comes in flat dark earth or in black. And then you have the law enforcement version, the one that I have, which comes with three magazines and night sights. And I'm very happy with my purchase. I love this gun. This is a, one of my favorite firearms that I have purchased. I've made the right decision, I believe, with my purchase. And of course, that 24 round magazine, though, that that, of course, makes you happy. So... Why should you buy the 509? Because it's it's not something different. I mean, it's it's different than a Glock, and FN is quality. It is a very, very good quality pistol. And one thing that I forgot to mention is that there is a loaded chamber indicator here, except the only issue with that is you can't really see it. When there's a, chamber, when there's a round in the chamber, um, you can kind of see it will bulge out just a little bit, and there's a little red tinge that will actually come out when there's a round in the chamber i obviously do not have a round in the chamber because both of my magazines are right there but yeah so that's another feature that it comes with but it's not really noticeable so i really don't call it that big of a feature i just call the only outstanding features that i know of i.e the magazine releases the slide release the back straps and the night sights but why should you get one i got one because of what my job what i do for my job i operate typically at night time so i definitely needed a weapon light and I definitely needed something to back that up in case you know I don't need the weapon light if it's in low light situations where I can still see what's in front of me but I can't see the sights my sights will be there regardless if it needs to be charged or not and that's why I went with the night sights because the illuminescent sights don't last forever these things last forever well they do have a half-life of like maybe 12 and a half years but you get my drift they'll last a very long time and my job demanded long lasting and everything I needed in one package, minus the light and the holster. Now, the reason why I got the holster was because, like I stated in the uh, video where I was showing off the night sights and the light, the Omnivore holster will fit virtually almost any kind of uh, duty pistol that's out there on the market right now. However, I got the weapon-bearing version only. It even says on the side of there, do not use without a light. And again, this holster will only fit a TLR1 and TLR2. Uh, it will not fit anything else. I'm not even sure if it'll fit like any other uh, weapon lights that are not streamlight, like an Enforce or a uh, or something else. Uh, I don't know any other weapon lights out there besides uh, Surefire, Streamlight, Enforce, uh, and everything else like that. But that's what I came with, and I'm very happy. And of course, I am happy with the leg rig because one thing that I would get when I originally had this mounted on my hip was every time I would sit down in my car, it would always jab in. And it does sit relatively high when it's in the holster. And this was just jabbing in my stomach and making it uncomfortable. And also because it was jabbing into my stomach, if I ever needed to get to it, God forbid, if I was in my car and I needed to get to it, I couldn't really get to it when it was on my side. If it's on my leg, I can just shift my leg a little and then I can get it. It makes it so much easier. It's a lot more comfortable in my opinion. A lot of people are like, oh, well, you're just going for the tactical look. And I'm like, well... Okay, yeah, it's tactical and tactical because my job as a, a fugitive agent kind of calls for that. Uh, we're in tight corners, you know, and I, I need my weapon to be comfortable. And, of course, I needed it to be secured so that way it won't come out if I'm ever in a tussle with a, a fugitive. They don't grab that gun out of the holster and go to work. God forbid that that happens. And, yes, I'm very happy with my purchase. Completely ambidextrous right out of the box. Good color. If anybody wants it in a flat dark earth, you can get it in flat dark earth. You have options. And that's the thing that I love about this pistol is you have options right out of the box and even after market. Because FN just released the option where you can plug up whatever side and make it lefty or righty only. And also you can swap out the parts with 509 parts, which is what I'm going to do. Because I like the elongated slide releases on the 509 Tactical. And I like the mag releases on the 509 Tactical a lot better. So that's what I'm planning to do with uh, this gun in the future. That's why I got the 509. If you guys are thinking about buying a new handgun, if you guys are thinking about having it in this setup, go for it. You know, do not hesitate. For the price that I got it, because I qualify for law enforcement uh, deals, I, of course, got it for a steal. But there are a whole bunch of other stores out there that offer civilians a pretty good deal for this weapon. And I'm pretty sure you can find one for relatively cheap.
it's a fantastic gun. And of course, Blackhawk, quality, fantastic pieces of equipment. Streamlight, fantastic. And of course, FN, you are going to be forever my number one. <laughs> anyway, guys, just wanted to show you that. Be safe. Have fun. Don't run with scissors. Always wear a seatbelt. Drink your milk. And don't get arrested. Peace out.